Hello and welcome to Liberia. Welcome and welcome to yet yeah, another broadcast here. Focus on Liberia on our program on point. This on point today is a special one because this one is a debate. That is why you see me here trying to moderate between Mr. Jerome Gibbon, who is the host of On Point, and his partner, Mr. George Canetule, who also happened to be the co-host of the program On Point here, a focus on Liberia. And so welcome to the broadcast. Let me tell you what the debate is all about, the rules and how it will all play out. And then the gentleman will get at it. And so hit that share button because the debate promises to be historically juicy or juicier. Wow, it is between Jerome Gidman and Mr. George Cannon today. What is the debate about? You might be wondering. The debate question is Liberia before 1980, that we call the first republic. Maybe I should say the historians call the first republic. And the Liberia after 1980, the historian also referred to as the Second Republic. Which one is better? And when we say better, what are we looking at? We are looking at the economy. We are looking at the economy. We're looking at service delivery. We're looking at education. We're looking at health. We're looking at agriculture. We're looking at security, the rule of law. We're looking at multi party democracy, civil liberty, freedom of speech and on and on if time permits. And so welcome to the broadcast. Let me now welcome the debaters, the hosts and co-hosts of On Point, starting as always with Mr. Gerun Gilman. Mr. Gilman, welcome to the debate On Point. I'm happy to be moderating. Thank you very much for inviting me or coming to, like we used to say in the old country, to stand between two of us. Hopefully uh, you don't get hit in the process. But it's always good to be a moderator because the Lord and the Bible says, uh, for those of you who are peacemaker, blessed are those who are considered peacemakers. So thank you for being making, uh, being a peacemaker here today. But the objective here is for me to make a clear case why the Second Republic is far, by far better than the First Republic. And one of the things that I want to look at, I, as a student, of the new republic in 1979 1978 when i was recruited by the power movement the case was very clear is are you satisfied with where you are or there could there be a better future tomorrow and i followed that call and i said i believe that there will be a better future tomorrow hence i follow the gentleman the godfather of multi-party democracy in liberia uh my man that i call dr backers Gabriel Matthews, the father of Mata democracy, the man who shone the light, the real light. And today here we are. So we're going to discuss those issues. And I think I am I'm comfortably seated and ready to debate. Comfortably seated, he said. And also comfortably seated is Mr. George Canantule, co-host of our program here, Focus on the Broadcom <clears throat> Online. Mr. Tule, again, welcome to the debate. How are you doing, sir? I'm, 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 uh, Elated, I'm happy to be here, and uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity to discuss these things. Hey, there are things that you see. One of the things that uh, Mr. Gimme and I we agree on is that a vast majority of our population is very young. Most of the people were born after 1980 and after 1990, so they have basically no real knowledge of some of the things that have passed. Uh, like they always say, the tale, as long as the tale of the hunt is, 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 is written by the hunter, the lion will always be the vanquish or the villain. So uh, the vanquish will always be the villain. Let me put it that way. Uh, what is happening is that we have not moved the needle in Liberia. It's sad that after almost 200 years of our existence as a nation, we have not moved the developmental needle in Liberia. So one of the things I really want to say is that there, nothing much has happened in Liberia that has changed since 1979. And, and I'm going to defend that. I'm going to be able to say that in many respects, Liberia was better before April 12, 1980, as compared to since uh, April, since after the war. 
let me just be that clear since after the war and there are many many respects and so in that sense liberia was far better off uh in, before 19 before april 12 1980 as compared to now thank you so very much folks this stage is set and let me get myself in the middle because i know uh intellectual bullets uh in liberia some intellectuals who say will be flying from you know both sides of this debate and i want to be able to contain them as much as i can welcome to the debate this is focused on liberia where we educate we elevate and promote all things liberia this is a debate between jerome gidman and mr george cannon tule they are debating the question liberia before 1980 the first republic and liberia after 1980 the second republic which is better let me throw in my opening questions and gentlemen you have two minutes each when you are called let's start with you mr tule what makes you believe that pre-1980 Liberia is better than Liberia after 1980? And this is your opening statement to start the debate. You have two minutes, sir. Um, there, 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 there are a myriad of things that, that, that one consider. Okay, uh, one of the things we look at, how the realization of people's dreams and goals as a mm -hmm. nation and their peace index, the happiness index, uh, 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 the economy, agriculture, uh, education, security, uh, health care, uh, uh, and infrastructure development compared to the population of 1980. In 1980, April 12, Liberia had 1.8 million people. The population of Monrovia was 325,000 people. Monrovia had a working sewage system. There were no, uh, uh, there was nothing like backflow of sewage uh, su or sewage in the in the streets of the city there there were also latrines in monrovia i saw them with my own eyes there were public latrines pe where people who live in the city could go and 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 and, and, and relieve and relieve themselves and also again when we when we when we look at the city the, you had institutions the government itself was involved in full production from 1971 the government established a uh, uh, Honor William Talbot, when he became president, he established Agrimenco and he contracted Israelis to come and run Agrimenco along with the FPMC people. And Agrimenco was to produce food for Liberia because in 1971 there was a there was a there was a there was a crisis, a financial crisis. Thank you, Mr. Tudor. All right, go ahead. All right, let me come to you, uh, Mr. Gilman, for your opening question: How Liberia after 1980? is better than Liberia before 1980. And you have two minutes, sir. Uh, that's a beautiful question. Thank you for asking that question. Mm -hmm. the, the answer to that question is self-evident. Uh, Pre-1980, when you talk to the American government, an international consortium, they will tell you that the Liberian population in the United States that was exposed to education and, and economic and all of that was less than 10,000. And you have to leave Liberia on on uh, the apartheid system where somebody had to sponsor you, and you have to make a deposit, five hundred dollar deposit, in the bank to the Liberian government to guarantee that you got those kinds of stuff are no longer happening. Here I am. I am a gay man. I'm in the United States. I came after 1980 and doing very well. Have exceeded. And I'm looking at millions of other Liberians, including yourself and the Tulis, excluding the Tulis because he was part of the establishment. So he will have made it here anyway. So that in itself is self-evident that the new republic is better than the old republic. Thank you so very much, gentlemen. We now are going to look at your position statement sector by sector in terms of the economy, agriculture, and so on and so forth so that you can have the opportunity to solidify your position in the debate. So let me progress. Let's start with the economy. And on the economy, Mr. Uh, Gilman, we're going to start with you this time. Uh, the economy. What makes you think that the economy of Liberia that we experienced before 1980 is not better compared to the economy we experience and continue to experience after 1980? Well, thank you very much when it comes to the economy. First of all, we have to define what the economy is. Mm -hmm. We are talking about pre-1980, we are talking about ag agrarian economy. Mm 
Mm-hmm. According to the World Bank here, the, the Liberian economy in the 60s, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, mm-hmm. it was considered classified as least developed, low income. And the, what, whatever corporations that were in Liberia, the Lamco and Bomb Mines and other Vianini, these corporations came into Liberia as consortium, not to benefit the Liberians per se, but 50% of Lamco was was owned by the consortium that's liberians and those who have money and foreigners and then specifically 12.5 percent of lanco was owned by particular elite families in liberia to the detriment of the people now how can you say that economy is better today than the economy that we have today somebody needs to tell me how five percent of the population monopolized 95 percent of the wealth of the country Okay, that benefited from it, and you are telling me that today that the economy of the past is better than the economy today are uh, different, and the, the number is very clear. There is nobody now in Liberia that will tell you that they own eighty percent or seventy-five percent of a particular industry in Liberia. It is not happening. That alone is a vast contrast. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tule. Uh, Mr. Gibbons, they have a few couple of seconds left. Do you have a question to what he just said? No, no, no. I, I'd rather just go on. All right. On. Then the same question to you on the economy. You are making the argument that everything Liberia was better, all right, before 1980. Let's talk about the economy. Yeah, not everything in Liberia was better, but the vast number of things that contributed to the the improvement of the material well-being of the Liberian people was better in 1980 than it is today. Okay. Let's run back. When Toba became president, like I said, Toba was vice president for 19 years. He was a vice president in the back room. You could always say he was, you could already, you could almost say he was a parked car. When he became president, he he, he went straight into action. Uh, the economy. The first thing Toba knew that if you really wanted to, to bridge the gap and to Opening up the nation, you had to focus on the economy. So what, what did he do? He set about in, introducing or establishing institutions that were lacking, that were not there. Investment in institutions, like I said, in 1971, as soon as he became president, he established Agriminco to plant rice, to have rice on the local market. Going from rice, we know that he established the, 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 the housing bank, the agriculture bank. Apart from that, he established the ADBs. And during this time, you had concessions. Sam Mr. Uh, Gimmel wants to talk about it. Bond mines wasn't a consortium. Lamco was a consortium, we agree. Bond mines wasn't a consortium. The NIOC wasn't a consortium. The LMC wasn't a consortium. Liberia Mining Company, the NIOC Liberia Iron Ore Company, uh, the one in, in, in uh, uh, Mana River, and the one in Bombing. They were not consortiums. Bond mine wasn't consortiums. These were economic enclaves that gave local Liberians jobs that elevated them from the state status of poverty up to something better. Mind you, by according to the same World Bank, the Liberian poverty rate in 19 of, of 1.8 million people in 1980 was 5 or uh, 50 50.4 percent in 1980. Today, the Liberian poverty rate is 64 percent. Of that 64%, 1.3 million people are considered to be existing in extreme poverty. That's almost the entire population of 1980. That's almost the entire population of 1980. Thank you, Mr. Tule. Thank you, Mr. Tule. And uh, Mr. Gibbon, what I just got up from Mr. Tule, uh, if I can summarize it, is that the living standard based on economic activities at the time before 1980 have afforded Liberian the opportunity to have a much better standard of living compared to what we have experienced from 1980 up to now. Do well, you agree? You no, know, we have we, we have to put this in context. Okay. We had a government, a mm-hmm. system, a country that has total peace for 100 and, uh, to 19, 133 years of complete mm-hmm. stability. We have, some would say, it was the golden years of investment in Liberia. The mm-hmm. question here is, if you look at NIOC and you look at LMC, you should say to yourself, 
where the, the, the father, the forefather, the, the economist that brought the cooperation to Liberia, what did they foresee, what did they forecast will be the benefit to the Liberian people when the corporations leave? Let's look at LMC, then look at Bonny Hills and see what happened when they left. I mm -hmm. think it was one uh, one economist that came from the United States that told the Liberian people, if you keep digging, all you're going to have remaining that you will be quiz when your children will be holes all over the place. When you look at LMC, what did LMC do to the menial job that it gave to these folks that we talk about living conditions? What happened? Was it I worked, I mean, my parents worked for NIOC, Minor River. My brother made 15 cents an hour as a security guard. You tell me when the Hoffs were making lucrative sums of money in, in that place, and the people at the bottom were making 15 cents an hour. What standard of living are you talking about? The bulk of the wealth of the nation was stagnated at 5%. Look at Mana River now. Look at L L L LMC in Mana River. Look at Bone Mine and see who benefited from it. That alone will tell you whether Thank the you. economy was good for the people. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tule, if you have a rebuttal, you can so do, but I want to also throw in this question about civic, uh, service delivery, which is also connected oh, to before, the economy. Before, before, we come, before we come to service delivery, let, yeah. let's, let, let's just look at let's just look at those areas. Mm -hmm. I'll be the first to admit that we, what Republic still did mm -hmm. with, uh, with Bombing Hills, mm -hmm. because they were the first in the country, mm -hmm. what they did, and uh, before we go, we, we got to look at context, like you said. Um, there were several looms starting from 1871 to 1905, 1917. There were looms that handicapped the Liberian government, along with the Firestone loom, mm -hmm. okay, that even caused Liberia to be called the Firestone Republic. So when the Liberian government went into this deal, when they when Tobo declared open door policy and they went into the deal with Republic Steel, mm -hmm. it was basically the government was handicapped. The government was looking for any way to generate income. So they made some very colossal mistakes that made these people to, to take all our resources and we really did not benefit from those two. But mm -hmm. the major benefit was training, giving capacity to Liberians and also a, lend, a standard of living for those who work in their dependence and the creation of economic enclaves that Liberians could participate in and benefit from. Today, all those economic enclaves with the exception of metal steel, they are all not in existence. With the exception of metal steel and the fringes, the very few that are, the, the concessions that are operating right now, they're not even operating well as compared to bomb mines, for instance. Bomb mine was a whole city that had everything you can think about, schools and everything based on just one concession. That is gone. Mr. Tule, Mr. Tule, quickly here, uh, one critique that uh, people uh, talk about all the time is this, that growth without development, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, pre-1980, there were a lot of economic activities. You mentioned some of the complaints in that. But when people look at development, uh, given those economic uh, activities, the complaints and all that, they say, well, that was we, we have some economic growth, so to speak. But in terms of development, that will translate into, you know, the material well-being of the people that is not there. And you think still uh, that period is still better than the period well, after 1980? Uh, from 1970. Mm -hmm. My main focus, like mm -hmm. the last conversation we had, right. was with Tobert. Because mm -hmm. Tubman was the one, was the catalyst for growth without development. Okay. Okay. The foreign investment in Liberia was only second to that of Japan in 1960. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So... That is a different story altogether. I want mm -hmm. to I want to focus on the time where the needle of development was moved in Liberia, mm -hmm. because Toba, like I said, when he hit the ground by 1974, between 1974 and 1976, and he established the, the the framework was established for the ADPs, the Agricultural uh, uh, Development Projects. I gave you. I grew up in Lofa. I lived in Lofa for a couple of years up to 1985, mm -hmm. and I will tell you. The entire Lofa County was sustained by that one project. When I'm talking about sustained, the quality of life, the amount of people that can point their hand and say, I'm a, I'm a beneficiary of what LCADP did in Lofa, helping farmers, but not only helping farmers, giving employment to and sending Lofians abroad, not the government. And, and were you saying Liberia experienced self sufficiency in terms of food production at the time? No, 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 no. Liberia had never experienced food production su uh, 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 sufficiency. 
Why? When they signed the five, no, now I won't say never. When when they signed the Firestone Agreement in 1926, they brought 10,000. At that time, the population was below a million. They brought 10,000 farmers from Mille, Bong, Lofa, and Niba counties. Not only Firestone, but later on. All right, Mr. Tule, I allow you to conclude, but I want you to conclude. Okay, I'm, How I'm, is I'm, that period better now? So conclude. That, that's what, but let, me, let me just conclude on this now. Mm -hmm. We have never, since they broke our ability to feed ourselves, Firestone mm -hmm. did. They took our farmers and they brought them to the, the coast to come and plant rubber. Mm -hmm. They broke our ability to feed ourselves. Thank you. Forba was the one that was working towards this by the establishment of Agrimenco. In Bon County today, if you go to the point in San Jose district, they will tell you that Agrimenco planted rice and how Thank you, Mr. Tule. We'll, we'll talk on more. We'll talk more on that when we we'll get to service delivery. Chance, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it gave the indigenous chance to harvest rice for themselves mm -hmm. that has never happened in Liberian history. Thank you so very much. Uh, Mr. Gibbon, let me come to you. You're just listening to Mr. Tule. Uh, what's your rebuttal, sir? Mr. Tule has the grandiose idea that the new the old republic started in 1970. And I, I try to disabuse his mind of this when the old republic started in 1847 and it came all the way to 1980. So for Mr. Mr. Tule to, to, to cherry pick and say, I want to go from 1971 to 1980, that's, that's nine years period he's talking about here. Mr. Tule, that's not how history works. You're talking about you. You're talking about corporations that came to Liberia in 1959, 1957, 1926, and you want to relegate that when they are doing well, things that are introduced. You want to you want to mention and quote them, but when it comes to holding them accountable, you say you want to concentrate on 1971 to 1980. That's not fair. The history we are talking about here is he's talking about Lofa County. Let's look at what government is all about. We are talking about social development. Mm -hmm. Did Lofa County have running water? Did Lofa County have uh, 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 utilities? Did yes. Lofa County have health care? Did yes. Lofa County have uh, universities? Did, you, did yes. Lofa County have those things that we we forecast that actually makes a government what it is? That's the people, the development of the people. Did Lofa County have that? I'm not saying Vanjima, because you may be talking about Vanjima here. We are talking about Lofa County, Lofa County. Lofa. It's not Never only Vanjima. So you want to tell people in Salaya, people in Salaye, people in Kolahun, they all have electricity, they all have running water, they, no, have, they all everyone. have sewage system. Not but, everyone. Hold on, Mr. Tule, you have your time, please. Yes, Mr. Tule, you are saying that that was our golden year. If that is true, you are, you also mentioned that there were no sewage, broken sewage in Monrovia at the time. And I know for one, when I went to visit my godmother, uh, Mrs. Uh, 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 when I went to Monrovia College to visit mm -hmm. Louis York, mm -hmm. before you get what to- year was that, Mr. Gibbon? Yeah, before you get to that, you will see broken switch in Monrovia everywhere. Everybody knew that. So what is it you're talking about? Oh, yeah, you're talking about, yeah, Mr. I'm talking about 1979 here, 1979, 1979. So this whole, this whole idea about everything was pristine, it is not true. Thank you, Mr. Gibbon. Again, folks, in Summer Space, you are watching Focus on Liberia. This is our program on point. But today on point is a debate between Mr. Jerome Gilman and Mr. George Cannon Tule. The question they are debating is Liberia before 1980, the First Republic, and Liberia after 1980, the Second Republic, which is better? We're looking at the economy, and that is why we have been on. If you are just joining us, please welcome to the broadcast. This is Focus on Liberia, where you educate and elevate and promote all things Liberia. Mr. Tule, they will put us into our second category, which I, is service delivery. You come in, Mr. Tule, be patient. No, I have to brother. give a disclaimer because- You will give your disclaimer when I end. You can't be interrupting the monitor when I'm speaking, bro. Stop that. All right? So this will come, now will not come to service delivery. Mm. All right? So on service delivery, he used a Lofa County as an example. All right. Uh, did we have all these services intended to improve or give the people quality of life at a time in terms of civil delivery, like use Nima County as a, I mean, Lofa County as a case in point, yes, and you lay emphasis on all the economic activities that were going on there. But of course, Lofa, but when, when the coup took place, I'll give mm -hmm. you, I'll free, Lofa had water running mm -hmm. in Vongerma. There was, there was pipe bone water in Vongerma. Only, only, only in the capital of Vongerma, right? Oh, not only in the capital, there was also pipe bone water in Zozo. 
there it was in Empire Water in Koba City, which is Kolahum. There was there was it was limited, but it was there. Today, nothing at all. Do you have any knowledge of how many persons had access to the running water or the no, running water you're talking about? There was no record of those things kept even on the internet. You can't find them. But I'm telling you today, it's not only Lofa County. If you drive through Liberia, you will see the Toba built a lot of water towers. Okay, almost all our capital, all our county seats have water towers, and 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 they they they, they were they were running water. They were they were producing treated water for the city. It's it's a reality. It, they, since 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 1990, because some of those things were still were working up to mm -hmm. 1990. Be honest, but since 1990. We have not had any kind of investment in those areas. It's just the truth. So what uh, other services were that, there? You seen you seen Lofa instance, County you as a case. What other services were there? Von Germa, for instance, sir, mm -hmm. had uh, telephone lines. Von Germa had telephone lines. Mm -hmm. Not everyone could afford it, but it was there, and those who could afford it could get it. My point to you is service delivery. And why why you think it was not affordable at the time for the for the ordinary people? Well, even today, it's still optional. If you have the income, you afford it. If you don't have the income, then it becomes a luxury. My point to you is this, that I am not here saying that what the TWP did in terms of the repression was the was a good example. But what I'm saying, and I want our listeners to, 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 to understand me, is that we have not moved the development needle. So there was no reason for us to kill Tobert. If that, if you ask me, yeah, Mr. Mr. Tule, let me make it only about Tobert. But I want to get more from you in terms of the services that were being provided by the government, or you know that the economy oh. had made available, or in the yeah. country at the time. Yeah. Okay. Because, it, like I said, let's take in, let's take certain things into context here. Liberia had 1.8 million people. That was our population by 19 by 1980 April 12. 1.8 million plus. Not even 1.9 million by census. All right. That was our population. Monrovia had a population of 325 million people. Not more, I mean, thousand people, not more than that. I said Monrovia had a working sewage plant for the city. Outside of the city, yes, outside of the city, people used septic tanks. We all know that. But within the city, there was working sewage plant. There were also latrine, public latrines for people to access. I also said, that you had ambulances running in 1980. There were ambulances running. In we'll talk about that when we get to half. Okay, but you asked me service delivery, so I'm telling you now about service delivery. There were telephone. There were telephone lines in Liberia in 1980. Did we have any mail system? Uh, could people? There was a mail system in Liberia in 1980, but we, we didn't have the address. The and can you name me some localities that, uh, that they were serving at the time? No, they were not serving the mail system in Liberia. Had never served homes. Because it was in, in Moravia? Yeah, of course. We know all across Liberia, you could write, you could write letters all, all right. across Liberia. All right. Thank you. Let me come to you, Mr. Gilman. Let's talk about service delivery. You know, for the people in the country to experience the meaning of life, services must be available not to the haves, but it should be available to the people who really need it most. Talk to me about service delivery. You think Mr. Tule moved the needle here on service delivery? Um Mr. Tule reminds me of the American elitists. When you when you talk about uh, an endemic, when we talk about poverty in the cities, absolute poverty will tell you slavery has been over through 300 years ago. Why are you still poor? You need to lift yourself up by your own bootstrap. I think in Jesse Jackson counter, I mean, Martin Luther King a counter, he says, for me to lift myself with my own bootstrap, I'm a, first of all, I have a boot. I do not have a boot, forget about the straps. And then Jesse, Jesse Jackson counter, he says, if you and I are running a 100 mile race and you starting at a 99 yard and I'm starting at one, and then you go and cross, the line, and you sit there and say, oh, you are so slow. Why are you so slow? I finished before you a year ahead. Same thing, Mr. Tula, because he had running water where he was, because he had telephone where he was, because he had flush toilet where he was. He believed that Liberia, Monrovia itself, including Sony Wayne, uh, uh, West Point, Gibraltar, all of those areas had running water. 
they had sewage system, they had latrine, and the, everything was dandy during those days. And I want to remind my brother, if you say we have not moved the needle in that direction, I want to agree with you, but the needle has never been there. We never had a needle. The needle has been in the hands of those who have, and I know you don't want me to go to the list here. So we were going to go to that later on. But I used to spend my time on Lane Street by A.B. Anderson Funeral Home. Mm -hmm. And I never saw all those things that you are talking about. And Lane Street is right downtown Monrovia. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we have many sectors to <laughs> conclude, so we can't spend all the time on one. Let's come to education. And on education, let me start with you, uh, Mr. Tule. Talk to me about education. How in any way, shape, or form, to the best of your knowledge, can you say education at its was in Liberia before 1980 is in any way better than what we have us after 1980 and over? Outcomes, brother, outcomes. Okay. I was just talking to Mr. Gaiman last night about outcomes. Mm -hmm. The quality of people who went to school and finished school in 1979, 1980, is better than generally is better than those the quality of those who are competing university today in Liberia. It's, it's it's not it's not even a contest. It's not even even high school, even high school, for instance, because I I was I was in I was in first second grade, and I saw and I saw the quality of education then. We 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 went to school in the remnant of the the, the Tobo era, but there were there were a vast emphasis placed on education. Let me say this. What we have today is the plurality of tertiary educational institutions. Uh, that means more universities have been established in Liberia, but there are no standards, so you don't have measured outcomes. All you want is credential. So people come from school, you give them a piece of paper to write, or even a common essay to even describe themselves, they can't. Because I, we have placed, we have moved the needle towards credential and not towards having established outcomes where students are... Uh, what we call core competency is created in students. Mm -hmm. And so before 1980, the, the population was small. Toba moved the needle. He built the, the, uh, the, 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 the multilateral high schools and there were investment in education in terms of the quality of the material and the students and everything that was all these government schools. Mm -hmm. But 1980, Todd Meha, when you're talking about debate in Monrovia, Todd Meha will be first on the line. National exam, Todd Meha will be first. I'm telling you the truth. But since 1990, the values, the, the outcomes are different. So if you, if I'm addressing this question, I would say this. Instead of moving forward, Liberia, we went back by 1990, and we have never, we've never, we never even figured out how to get back on track. Thank you, Mr. Tule. And to conclude your point on education, give me two words that you can share with our audience for which you think education then was better compared to after 1980. Oh, okay, the first thing I said, outcomes. And then what? The, the quality of university students, the quality okay. of high school students in, 19, in, 19, in 1980 is far better now than the quality. In 1980, those who graduated from Louis Arthur Graham School of Law Thank are you, they, Mr. Are, are, they, are, they, are the bulwarks of the legal system in Liberia today. Today we are passing people who can't even read legal briefs. Thank you, Mr. Tule. That answers my question. He said in terms of quality and also in terms of what? No, I said outcome. I said, outcome. 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 Yeah, he said yeah. outcome and quality. You know, if you compare uh, before 1980 to after 1980 education system, according to him, uh, was better. Uh, Mr. Gibman, we're talking education here. That's correct. So do you want to make the argument that after 1980, we have experienced a better education system or whichever way you'd want to put it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and let me go back to uh, the, the Catholic Reformation. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther told the Catholic Church and says, if the scripture says to us that every man or woman is going to stand before the Lord and says, this is who I am, then he says to the Catholics, then everybody needs to learn to read the Bible for themselves because they are going to give an account to the Lord for themselves. So this was the beginning of public education. Massive public education and not only to the elites. Let's go back to Liberia. My brother here, obviously, I don't want to say, I do not want to pit him against myself, but he went to, he went to CWA. 
I think he went to Riggs. Those are the best of the best of the best in Liberia. I went to elementary demonstration school and I went to Bassa High School. So I see things differently. When, when he was in Liberia, when we were in Liberia, Liberia had only two universities, the University of Liberia, Cuttington University, and then later on, Tuckman University came along. Today, we have here, according to the UN, 2019, we have 20, we have 38 universities, 38 universities and 14, uh, including 14 community colleges that is, that are actually now educating people on a massive level for the sole creation of creating a middle class. Now I'm an educator and you an educator, he is an educator as well. In, in elite school where we have small classrooms, Obviously, the education is enhanced, but do we sacrifice quality for the masses? And I'm saying, when we mass educate, our chances of producing the two layers and the CAs and the, and the gamers of the world enhances. What we are seeing here, put them all in there and but, let the best rise to the top. And don't be, the government should not be in the business of selecting winners and losers, which they have done. Thank you. Wrong. And today, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Gidman. And I want you to conclude so that I want you to leave something with us on your core point, your core argument here on this thing. Uh, when Tule and it is a uh, in terms of outcome and quality, the education that was provided or the education system before, according to him, is better than what we have after 1980. Now, for you who are arguing that after that. It was better. Why are you living with us? Give us two words that you can look at or we can look at to say, yes, the education system after 1980 was better than before 1980. Number one, we got access. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have access to more university, more colleges, more high school. Mm -hmm. Grand Basel County was founded in 19, uh, 1835. They had one high school until 1980. Now we mm -hmm. got nine high schools. So mm -hmm. we have access. Mm -hmm. And there's the next one. one. Mm -hmm. The second is we have the information age. We have access now. We have competing interests when it comes to modern, uh, modernization. So Thank now you. We have and how media. are those two? Mm -hmm. How are those two in any way better than quality and outcome that he talked about? We have. I told you we have access, which is we can go to any university. You have a choice now. You don't have to go. To I the get university. that, but how is access? access? Yes, and better than quality and, and, and outcome. Well, listen, when you mm -hmm. have access mm -hmm. and you have a, you, you have a, a plurality of, of talents, mm -hmm. your chances of choosing is very, when I, when you, when you put a, a, a when you put out a, a, a job, let's say a RFP a request for a proposal and, mm -hmm. you, and you have 25 people making, uh, giving you a choice of different resume as opposed to two, your mm -hmm. chances of, Selecting different people, different qualities, actually enhances. So we are saying access is a major, major component to Thank develop you. the access. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Tule, I'll, 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 I'll rephrase the same question for you. How he talk about access and he talk about he use the word plurality, but I would, I would use a different word. Uh, maybe quantity, we have more schools now, you know, or let me use the word more. Maybe it might be a much better word. How quality, I mean, outcome and quality you talk about better than access and also more. Uh, the reality here is that you can have all three. You can have mm -hmm. access, you can have outcomes, you can have quality. What has happened in Liberia is that we have placed, uh, we have placed premium in, 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 in our current context. We place premium on access all right, and on credentials and not on real outcomes. Because I was telling you something. I used to work at a place. I told him yesterday. And uh, there were friends of mine in the office. We used to use, uh, high quality said, uh, cards to go to work, all right? You sign in and you sign out in Monrovia. And I have friends who were always in their office, working in customer service, always in their office. At the end of one time, one of them came to me and brought up people and said, oh, we're, we're, I'm graduating. You guys invited to my party. I'm like, what? You graduated from university and you've been in this office all along? Okay, uh, each to his own. My point here is this, right? With time, 
We placed Ellie Jones said was one of those that did the disservice to Liberian people. She placed so much premium on having paper, but not on the ability to, 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 to defend your credential. And so when you ask that question, when it comes to access, I was the one who said that, yes, in 1980, 1980, there was only Tottenham. Uh, was a community college. It was a technical school, and, uh, and and even BWI was one of our community colleges. They accelerated the program, so we had nothing in that in that sense besides University of Liberia and uh, Cotton University. So there were limited <laughs> access to tertiary education. We that 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 pro problem has been addressed, but what is lacking? There it shouldn't even be because if you have all these universities who are producing students who can defend the credential. It affects right. our national development. That's my point. Thank it affects, you. It's affecting our national development is a disgrace. When when foreigners come and interact with our people, they shake their head and say, "Damn." Thank you. What, 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 these people got university degrees. Some of them even got masters. Thank, th thank you, uh, gentlemen. Thank you. Let me progress. Let's move to healthcare, and healthcare. Let's start with you, uh, Mr. Tule. How can you say? Or how can you explain to us to believe that healthcare delivery before 1980 uh, is better or can be better than healthcare delivery after 1980? Mr. Tule, I'm asking you. Sorry, I was I, I was reading a comment and I I, I missed your, your first the beginning. Are, are you are you reading your little note? I'm no, asking no, 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 a question no, no, no. on healthcare. No, I, got, I got a comment because yeah, I, let, I let, come, let, come, let come to healthcare, Mr. Tudor. I think you should pay attention to the debate. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Get the comment, please. Uh, we're talking about healthcare. How was healthcare better compared to healthcare today in terms of delivery, quality, and everything else? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. We had far less doctors to the per percentage of the population in 1980 mm -hmm. than we have now, mm -hmm. but we had capable medical care. I gave you a comment. I told Mr. Gimme, my mom was a nurse at JFK, mm -hmm. and my stepdad was a doctor later on in the 90s, in the mm -hmm. 80s. And I practically grew up running the halls of JFK. Nobody should stop me. I'm one of those that, that was well loved, the kids, all the nurses, because I had a lot of aunts there. Uh, a lot of relatives there working there in the record session. All of, I had a lot of family members working there. So I, I would just go and just play on my vacation time. And I told him, I said, that hospital was so clean that my mom never had a, the, the thought of saying, oh, my son running all over the place. Let me not, let me stop him. Uh, I, I have freedom in, 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 in 78, 79, 1980, 90, 81, 82. I have freedom to room that hospital. Let me, let, look. The outcomes, the, the is that what brought you to the conclusion that it was better because it's okay, you can run around? No, 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 no. This is what I'm telling you now. When we look at the healthcare outcomes, then the the issue, for instance, of waterborne diseases, uh, have always been in Liberia. So the needle have not moved with that. They were still they were still tackling, but guess what? Tobo established a, a company called LCADP. LCDP had one thing called the PMU, the Project Management Unit. They were a, a unit of healthcare providers. And one of their things was they served with the UN on, this, on the, the Sister Somiasis project. Sister Somiasis is a, is a worm, is a not worm, is a, is a snail, is a, is a microscopic snail that causes serious problems for male, in male reproductive health. And you get it by doing rice farming or fishing in the waters and all those kind of things. And the World Bank worked with LCADP and BCADP everywhere that they had a prevalence of this disease. There were companies, these, these were institutions that Tobo established, and they were also in the Mr. Tule, Mr. Tule, mm -hmm. in your opinion, mm -hmm. the many Liberian people have access to health facility or health care before 1980 compared to after 1980? Uh, I won't say no, no, no. It's, it, it, it's not the same. Because we have a plurality of, of, of healthcare systems, private entrepreneurs, private and practitioners have opened more healthcare systems now than back then. But the difference is the quality of care. Mm -hmm. For instance, I gave you a common example. The kinds of, of, of surgeries that Bon Mines Hospital did mm -hmm. in Liberia right. is no longer provided. The quality of those German doctors working on Liberians. All right, thank you. And, and, and finally, uh, Mr. Tule, as a kid, you ran around in JFK, so 
you saw how clean it was. So that had given you some sense of the quality and all that. Did you go to any of the villages in the Leeward counties as a kid at a time to see how life was there? Before, let me say this to you. The level of poverty, because we're talking about the purchasing power of the dollar. In 1980, the Liberian, there was no Liberian dollar, it was the U.S. dollar. Tule, are you answering my question about your visit to any of the Leeward oh, no, no, County as a you, kid? I'm answering you now. I'm answering you now. In, in 1980, it was the U.S. dollar. And he talked about a relative of his making 50 cents. In the 70s, do you know how much 50 cents could buy in the local market? You know how much? Tule, you're not answering my question. No, I'm answering your question. No, no, in no. Village, so I will, I will, I will leave it there. Like, I will leave it there. I know why you are dodging the question. I because not, I, as a kid, I, yeah. as a kid, you were playing in the hospital, but I was mm -hmm. playing in the swamp. I was playing on the farm, bro. And that's why I wanted to ask you. I grew up partly on the farm, bro. All right, I let went, me come to yes, Mr. I, I Mr. To, I went to every district in Lofa County. Thank you, Mr. Tudor. You Thank asked you, a Mr. question, Tudor. though. No, yeah. no, you, let me let me answer the question. I went to every district in Lofa County with my dad. I saw, I've seen life. I went on the farm myself. I drank from rivers. I have drank tippet still water. And got sick from it. I had to be hospitalized. So I have seen life at the lowest and I've seen life at the highest. What I'm saying to you is this. The level of poverty in Liberia today is not the same as the level of poverty in Liberia. Thank you, Mr. Like Tule. Thank you, Mr. Tule. You're going over four Liberia minutes now. The poverty line. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Gilman, we're talking health care. Talk to me. Can you argue that health care being provided after 1980 up to now better than what we had and been provided before 1980? Well, uh, we should, you shouldn't even ask me that question because Mr. Tule answered the question for me. He said, yes, the healthcare system is now better because we have more doctors, we have more uh, private investors, we got more clinic, we have more surgery, you know, we have all of those things now that are happening all over the country. So the question is, that the answer to that question is an absolute yes. When I was in Monroe a few months ago, uh, you have a choice to go to either one of the Chinese clinic or Liberian clinic. My brother, uh, uh, Lawrence Zumo, uh, for the first time, built a, 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 a neurological center in Liberia where he's dealing with epilepsy and seizure. and all. So we have a plurality of, of medical centers all over the country. I grew up in Grand Bassa County before, uh, part of the county, district number three, before I came to Monroe, uh, Buchanan. We had no, we had no clinics. Uh, if you wanted to go to see the nearest clinic, you don't have to go to Lamco or you had to go to, to La. These were all concession, uh, concession clinics. Now the government is building clinics basically everywhere. You can say we don't have the best doctors, the best days, but we have clinic everywhere in my district where I used to, we used to go to Buchanan to go to the nearest clinic. Now we got four clinics in my district, four. Forget about life, forget about the major hospitals. People can now go and, and, and have babies and, and have midwives. And those are things that we only heard about. You had to go to the maternity center in Monrovia to be delivered in a hospital. So this young man is actually taking his lifestyle Okay, as an example of what he said, he saw poverty. He never told you that he lived and experienced poverty. I grew up in poverty, so I know what poverty is. He saw it, he saw it, but he didn't experience it. So as far as he's, he's concerned, by drinking in the creek, that is an experience of being poor, the poor of the poor. You, you, it was a choice that he made to go and drink for us. It was not a choice. Mr. Was, Given, uh, uh, Tule co argument here is whether or not there were limited assets or fewer clinics or hospitals or fewer doctors, the quality, he said, was profound if you compare that to what we have from 1980 upward. What do you have to say to that? Uh, uh, you, you notice Mr. Tule did not give you any empirical data. He didn't give you any answer. He didn't give you any numbers to say we have 1,000 hospitals, we have this doctor. Have. He only said, he, he said, remember no, he, he admitted said, that we no. have more facility now, yeah, more yeah. doctors now. But, he also but the said, quality then yeah, but, but cannot listen, be compared listen, to today. Are, and that's what I want you to argue against. When we are talking about Liberia, we want to talk about Liberia. He's talking about fiefdoms. 
Okay, you remember he said Lamco, he said uh, uh, bomb mines, he said those corporations, they had those facilities and they had German doctors. Now, why would I want to argue with him about that? He didn't say that, uh, uh, Liberian doctors. I, I, so I, I, what I want to know is the care that's been provided from 1980, including today. Yes. Can you argue that the quality is better than what was provided before 1980? That's my question. I just said yes. Because okay. they had, they, they, when I had, so the then how, how, how is the quality better now? What, what but, else suggests that we're having quality healthcare now compared to 1980? Okay, let's let's look at the life expectancy. Let's mm -hmm. look at the infant mortality. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the, the 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 those are the those are clear indicators that that health health is 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 improving now. Uh, when you talk about German doctors and Swedish doctors, that mm -hmm. does not apply to Liberia. We are talking about Liberia now providing education and training mm -hmm. and health services to their own. And it is on the plural level from Grand Basel County to Lofa County. You have them everywhere. He agreed to it that we have a plurality of that. So with that means, the more health centers we have, the more health facilities we have, the less likely it is that our children, the infant mortality is going to go up. So the question is very, very easy. Let's look at the number. The number is very clear. Infant mortality in the 60s and the 70s is, is much, much higher than it is now in the, uh, in, the, in the New Republic. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. We're going to take a short break. Folks watching us here to focus on Liberia. This is on point. This on point is a debate, and that is why you see me moderating. We have George Cannon Tulip. Debating Mr. Jerome Gedman on the question is Liberia, the first republic that is a Liberia before 1980, better compared to the Liberia after 1980, the second republic. We're looking at the economy, we're looking at healthcare, we're looking at education. When we come back, we look at agriculture, we'll look at democracy, which is blah blah blah. Everything there we will look at it. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned, folks. At Focus on Liberia, we discuss everything Liberia. From education to politics, arts and culture, entertainment, agriculture, history, religion, family, and technology. Focus on Liberia uncovers and showcases the best of Liberia and shows the world the truth about Liberia. We educate, elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We conduct interviews, panel discussions, debates, and more. Tune in to Focus on Liberia on Facebook and YouTube and be a part of the stories that make up the news. This is Focus on Liberia, and I am Dennis Jack. And I am Anthony Sia, moderating in this very interesting historical debate that is so far going very well between Mr. Jerome Gedbell and Mr. George Cannon Tule, gentlemen, let come to agriculture. On agriculture, let me start with you, uh, George. Agriculture, you know, should be the lifeblood of any country because if the people can't eat, they will die, and all other things will be meaningless. Before 1980, how did we do in agriculture for which you can argue or want to argue that we had a better system than in terms of agriculture compared to from 1980 to now. We had a very better system. Um, LPMC was established on the top Tottenham. Mm -hmm. And uh, by by the top, the CDA, LPMC, by the, by the time Tottenham top, 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 top came there, you see, Tobo had basic understanding. Like I said to you earlier, Tobo had a wingman, and his wingman was Stephen Tobert. And Stephen Tobo was, was, was an entrepreneur. He was an agriculture, he was an agriculture entrepreneur also. He had farms. And, and because of that, they had understanding of what needed, what, what, what it was to plant farms. Toba had farms, all right, at Belefinet, or and other places too. So, and they came from a farming family. So they knew what needed to be done. LPMC went into full swing. Then they had smallholder on the Toba that I already said. Toba knew how what, what needed to be done. Our farmers needed equipping. They needed, they needed, they did not only equipping, but they also needed, yeah, equipping will also knowledge, the know how. So the ADPs were established. I told you how LCDP went into, into LCDP didn't just only work in terms of farming. LCDP did road rehabilitation. They built bridges. They ran educational institutions. They did a whole lot. The same with BCADP. Carry was established. Why? Because Tobot knew the importance of agriculture, my friend. Under Tobot, 
we had we were exporting thousands of metric tons of cocoa and coffee every year on a tour i told you agrimenco was contracted or established and then the israelis were contracted to run agrimenco and they planted rice in Foya and Bond County. There were the two part of projects. They were about to go to Grand, what the name? Not Grand Gide, the one behind Grand Gide, River G. There was uh there was the, the, the plan was for River G before the coup took place. And then the coup ransacked everything. So when you ask me food crop production, Liberia didn't lack food. There was nothing, but guess what? Right now, if we have a crisis in Liberia where we cannot input rice. In one week, we'll go hungry as a nation. One week. But in 1990, I remember in my house, in 1980, in my house, we didn't eat pusawa rice or parbo rice, as we call it. We didn't eat white rice. We ate either the farm, the, the swamp rice or the lac 23, the, 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 the heavy green or uh, color rice, the brown looking rice with a mixed color on it. Those mm -hmm. are the rice we ate locally produced. I Thank never you. ate parbo rice. Except we wanted to eat power rice with dry rice because that's what it was good for. Thank we never you. eat power rice as a regular rice until after the war. Thank you. Mr. Gilman, let's talk agriculture. Yes. Agriculture after 1980. Mm -hmm. Better and how? Well, this is why uh, those of us who like to look at empirical numbers, let's look at the numbers. Uh, Liberia. La Liberia, our, let's look at the GDP. Our oh. GDP, our GDP prior to 1980 was around 16, 17% uh, agriculture based. Mm -hmm. 2020, our, our G 36% of our total GDP is attributed to agriculture. Mm -hmm. That comes from uh, the different farming methods, the plurality again, access to farming and all of those things. So we are talking about a major jump, okay? Mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, my brother here is talking about Agrimengo. Agrimengo was, Agrimengo was a corporation set up. It was a front, a bogus corporation set up by the Talbots, and they brought an Israeli company in to run it for them. And we knew this. He knows this. It's written. It's, it's clear. Agrimengo was a corporation run by the Israelis, brought in by the Talbots. So what is my brother here talking about? You remember, he personalizes everything because he benefited from this. So as far as he is concerned, it was all dandy from 1971 to 1979, and Talbot shouldn't have been killed. He tried to personalize this, but that's not how it works. Agrimengo that he's talking about, as good as it was, it was a front. And it was run by the Israelis, brought in by the Talbots. And he knows this. It's written. He has the same document that I have. So I don't know what he's talking about. Agriculture now. Even yeah, look at how come, Mr. Gimmel. Mr. Gimmel, Gimmel, you also Gimmel. talk about LPMC. You care to uh, give a rebuttal on that? Yes. What is LPMC? Like, LPMC was where our parents took basically all the small growers like my father who grow coffee and cocoa we would take our our meager growth and carry it to lpmc and the way and gave us uh, maybe a penny on a dollar for what we produce and then we go back home what happened to that money that was collected by lpmc nobody not even the government not even talbot was accountable to the people to say from two from 1972 to 1980 we made two billion dollars out of lpmc and this is where the money went lpmc was basically another black hole created by the talbot family and nobody knew and he went and uh, and one of his one of his boys that were working there was the same man that we are talking about today joseph Waikai, who been around since 1847 i guess he was also director i guess at one point also minister of agriculture under him and nothing when he talked about needle have not changed nothing until recently recently after the so age he, he talked about uh the exportation of agricultural produce at the time mm -hmm. Can you Talk on that too. I mean, looking at are we exporting everything now? Anything? Well, well you, you see, when we are talking about a new republic, we cannot discount the war and the damage that the war did to the infrastructure, to the what Talbot himself used to call, uh, I think he called it gradualism, that we do small, small. We, we're not going to do too much, but we do small, small. It was the same group of folks who said 1980, April 12 was not, was not what 
was ordained by them, and they came back and said, we are going to get rid of this door government by any means necessary. And door told them, when you are coming here, these elephants are about to fight. The grass is going to suffer. Those were his exact words. And the American embassy told them, if you got continue with it, well, Liberia is going to go back 100 years. And his people, the United Party people said, break down the mansion. We're building in three months. This strong Monroe will rebuild it. All right. Not knowing the consequences of war. And this is what we call the unintended consequences of war. This is what we have. Really? So with all that, we have done exceptionally well from 1980 to where we are at this point. Uh -huh. But you can't give me any uh, thing on uh, exportations since uh, after 1980? Uh, even including today, are we exporting anything? Uh, uh, we are not exporting as much as I thought we could be mm -hmm. because of the war. Mm -hmm. And Liberia is, and, and and when you if you count in the Ebola and, and the pandemics and the mm -hmm. epidemic and all of those things that happen, yes, it has impeded most of the things. And plus, our infrastructure is totally destroyed. It is just recently before the port of Buchanan was revamped. So, Mr. Gidman, so yes. I get the issue about the world, Ebola, and all that. Do we have anything in place now to put it in a better place? Or if we don't have it, are there things in works right now to put us in a better place as well in terms of agriculture? Well, I don't want to be political here, but when I talk about the propo agenda, one of the pillars of the propo agenda, I told you pillar number one, is power to the people. And the second major pillar in that is road connectivity. We want to connect the road for things to move from point A to point B. Roads have to be connected. Mr. Tule said it. He said, no, I just want to know what has been done now. To I, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, tell you so that we are building roads. We are connecting. We, we, the, the, the economy for the library economy to blossom. We have made it clear that road connectivity. And we gave you what is called best practice, 1956. Dwight Eisenhower introduced the interstate highway in this country. All right. And he Thank said you, it was Gimmel. going to, to, mm -hmm. to enlighten and develop the economy. Same concept in Liberia. Once Thank we you. connect our roads, the economy is going to blossom. We're going to export massively. Thank you very much. Folks, there you have it. Mr. Jaron Gilman there. He is an unabashed citizen, an apologist of the regime and he does not apologize to anybody i think i, I think i need to make a statement here oh yeah i will give you a chance to 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 rebut. i'll give you one minute for for a rebuttal here so mr tule go ahead and make your rebuttal so we'll move to the uh, next it, step. It, it, it is sad that mr Gimmen keep going into other issues instead of focusing on the main thing you asked about food crop production and i mm -hmm. said that liberia you cannot grow food look Tobo established the adb bank the agriculture cooperative development acdb bank the purpose for this was to help work with the CDA. Mr. Gimmen doesn't even know if there's a CDA in Liberia. He worked with the CDA and smallholder in Bonn County and other places and, and cooperatives across the country to ensure that monies are placed directly into the hands of our farmers. And then when when when, when the, the three counties were targeted with the 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 the, 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 the uh, agriculture cooperative, I mean the agriculture uh, developmental project, the ADB ADPs, they 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 helped in increasing our yield. Okay, because these companies just did not work in that way, but they also brought in the letters at that time. Or, 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 or technology and give it to our farmers. They brought the best seed seeds, the best hybrid plants, and help our farmers. And we saw the results with our eyes. We saw the swamp farms with our eyes. We saw people engaged in agriculture. Even on a dough, it was even better than today. So at the end of the day, it is not just to say, oh, the war came, the war did not come. One of the things answering that is lacking in our present dispensation is the lack of our of, of an agriculture policy. Let and Tule, may I ask a question so you can conclude? May I ask a question? Do you know how much percentage of the budget that was being allotted for agriculture at the time? Do you know? It's the same as today in terms of percentage. Never it, it, it the, was it the yes. same twenty percent? Yes, it hasn't moved. But guess what? What about that? And and, and and did did administrations before 1980 meet that 20 percent threshold? Oh, more than that, because what it did went to the World Bank, and you say all these projects I'm talking about were sponsored by the World Bank, and you say so it was mm -hmm. extra budgetary uh, 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 support for those projects. Mm -hmm. Carry government didn't use her money on carry. 
Carrie was supported by the 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 the, the, the uh, uh, war food program and other programs. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying to you is this: they have, we have so many bilateral and trilateral agreements. In prior, we talk, that was Toba dead. Toba went out there and saw his programs, and he got support from the War Bank. He got support from USAID. Right now, how many projects that government will write and USAID will say we can in support? In Liberia. Thank you, thank you. And I will allow Mr. Gidman to conclude on the Mr. Gidman, according to the uh, Maputo Declaration, which specifically talk about agriculture, it has encouraged or encourages uh, African governments, you know, uh, especially to allot about 20% of their budget to agriculture because when you know I want agriculture, I will borrow your word, it's blossoming, you know, it can translate into so many things. But according to what we have researched so far, the CDC government has allotted around 1.2% so far of the budget to agriculture. That is a deficit of 8.8%, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So when you say things have been done, you know, to put in a better place in agriculture, where you're not even meeting the threshold set aside, which is the 20%. Well, let's let's look at it. Mm -hmm. Uh, my brother talked about Tolba was doing uh bilateral and people were farming, mm -hmm. but he didn't tell you that the Tolba manipulated the economy to the point where he was selling bitter ball, coal, rice. There were nobody, you remember, he never knew one other farmer in Liberia that made right. any right contributing right. factor. Listen, sir. Right from Mr. Mr. Tule never, never named five people out of out of the we talk about the elite, the five percent that he would come and say this person ran this particular farm and this person contributed 10 or 20 percent to this. He talked about Bright, he talked about Cooper. Mr. Gimme, I'm Cooper. asking you about the percentage, okay. and you don't want to you don't care to comment on no, that. You are no, you are talking about you said that the money that 20 percent of the budget. Mm -hmm. Should be spent towards that was that's a proposal. That is a proposal. That's correct. Now we have Liberia if, is if a you, senator to this particular saw, declaration. That, that's correct. That's correct. We have been secretary to everything else that happened. And you have eight point eight percent deficit. Yes, we agree. There is a deficit. We need to spend more in agriculture. There is no no denying that the number is clear. I believe in empirical evidence. It mm -hmm. is there. We need to do more in agriculture. We all right. agree to that. That is our way. I am saying our way to agriculture. There is no reason to make farm when you cannot bring your produce to the market. We need farm to market road. We need highway. We need road, and the government is headed in that direction. And, and 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 to 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 end on a political note here, you know, to let it laugh a little bit here, my brother, you know, our president is the bar road medicine. The SAR is this virtually call off now. The government said the billing road, the billing road, but the other bar road medicine can't face the road in the SAR. So I don't know how we're gonna bring the agricultural product. And let me uh, let me just market. say something I omitted. Excuse me, sir. Something I omitted. Yeah, be brief. Global established the feeder roads project under the Ministry of. Uh, public works. Well, the CDC claim is because doing that too. The feeder feeder road, road, no, 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 because guess what? Do we know mm -hmm. what this project did? And mm -hmm. people, there are people on our on, 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 listening to us can, can attest. This project put hardware, equipment, tractors, uh, graders, bulldozers in, into the counties and they functioned. They All right. giving, well, they, some of those tractors we know project, during the early know, administration broke down. Hold on now. The Federal Road Project continues. Let, 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 let us stick on subject here. Let, let, let's no, 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 stay no, on subject here. Let's agriculture now because guess what? He keeps talking about about the, the, the pillar of the, the whatever the agenda. Broke agenda. agenda. All right. Yeah. But I'm right. saying to you, what mm -hmm. Tobert did was he established the Federal Road Project. Jerome is not aware. He's coming from the village. Thank you, Tule. Let me progress because of they, time. They, 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 they established the Federal Roads Project and they had the Federal Roads based thank, in thank every you, Tule. county. And they, thank and you, they, they graded the road. They did their best to keep Liberia open. Thank you, Tule. Folks, we are making progress and this time we are coming to security and the rule of law. And Mr. Gidman, I will give you the opportunity to start on this segment. Security and the rule of law. Do you believe that there was a better security in place and rule of law as well before 1980 or after 1980? Well, uh, to look at the rule of law in Liberia, we got to look at it in the context of freedom. Mm -hmm. Prior to 1980, we ran a Boyo state where 
there were no freedom of movement, mm -hmm. freedom of speech, freedom of anything. So everybody knew their place or their places. Now, what was your definition of Boyo State? <laughs> well, uh, when you look at, uh, there is a place there they call Mount Bagley. Uh, during those days, they used to call, you cannot go through Mount Bagley. It is called you too late. After six o'clock, if you were into the Mount Bagley area where the, the Uris are, uh, you are you are subject of disappearance and dismemberment and all of that. Uh, we also have a security state where we used to have something called the PRO, where everybody was actually keeping an eye on each other. My father, I mean, I would keep an eye on you. And we were basically, it was a security state where nobody had the freedom to do anything. So yes, security was also in their time you were not free to move. There was no freedom of movement, freedom of speech, freedom of anything. Now the new republic, you have freedom of speech, freedom of movement, freedom of everything. And let's talk about nine, let's talk about 2005 to be give you an example of the UN sending 15,000 strong men and women to give us security. When they left in 2012, 2014, 2015, now here we are, in the, the president, we are presidency, and we do not have one international security on our soil, and our country is still peaceful. We are still living our lives, moving. We are doing everything we can. We are not saying they are not challenging. So I, I am telling you that, the, that security in the republic now is way, way better than it was prior to 1980. No auditor die on the top of. All right, thank you, Mr. Tule. We're talking about security and the rule of law. You are making the argument that before 1980, security and rule of law was far better than what we experienced from 1980 to today. How? Look, let, look, Mr. Gaiman got no defense here. He just lost because it's indefensible. He like even well, Mr. Gaiman just that, said we were yeah, we were running yeah, a boyo state. No, that, that was coming to here now. Okay? okay, go ahead. 19, if you give me so much chance, please, more than two minutes. You have I'm, two I'm, minutes. Go ahead. I have, no, I have to give a background to this. Uh, 1967, okay, James Anderson, I mean, not James Anderson, Alan Yancey was arrested with other people again and and, and, and tried and found guilty in, in a, how you call it, sir? In, 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 in Maryland. But the case came to the Supreme Court, Boyo case. The case came to the Supreme Court. They were Boyo busy going all over Liberia. Does that, like does that confirm the Boyoism you were talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. People were in a state of fear. People used to be afraid to go out or after that. True. When Toba came, the first thing Toba did when Toba came to power, Toba started signing death warrants. Toba even executed his own nephew, William Toba, for killing his wife. Justin Obi, scores of other people. Then the same James Anderson, after the death of 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 of. of uh, uh, the shield after the death of the shield, uh, James Anderson became he wasn't the person who was, uh, who was the head of the who was the chairman of the, the TWP. But in 1976, 1976, James Anderson became uh, chairman of the either 77, 77, he became chairman of, of, of the, 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 the TWP. His son was superintendent of, of, of Maryland County. And his son was accused of killing Moses Stewart. And that case, we all know about it. They, have, they hung seven persons for it. Talbot in, instituted the rule of law in Liberia. James Anderson was chairman of the ruling party. His son, James Anderson Jr., was killed, was executed in Hapo for killing somebody while his father was still chairman of the ruling party. Talk about the rule of law. That one will never happen on a judge. We are forever and ever amen. It will never happen. Nobody will be held accountable. On the judge, we are. The head of the internal auditing agency died in a very mysterious way, wherever they point to foul play. Nothing came out of that investigation. Other auditors died. We, you're talking about peace? The absence of fracas or war, it doesn't mean peace. Liberia people are on tenter hooks. You can't even walk in the street with your phone in your hand. People, when you want to go to bed at night, you have to lock yourself up multiple times to ensure your safety. In 1980, 1979, we only people left their doors open. Okay, people left their doors open. The highest crime in Monrovia was petty burglary. That was the highest crime in Monrovia. Check the statistics. Today in Liberia, 
if you're not careful, they'll come in your house, they'll rape your wife, and they will kill you. And you talk about security. Right now in Liberia, we were more secure under William Talbot than we're secure now. Because guess what? In under William Talbot, he showed that nobody was spared. He said, if you kill, if you break the law, the law will hold you responsible. If you kill, and before William Talbot, uh, uh, too late, do you care to keep, uh, talk about before William Talbot? Oh, Tottenham? Tottenham was the PRO system he talked about was on a top man. No PRO system existed on the top, but top abolished all that nonsense. Okay? On a top but man, he was vice president, president, right? Mm -hmm. But he was vice president then. But what will you do if you know about the power of, of, of top man? I heard a story about how on top man sat at cabinet meetings and he took a cigar. All he had to do was to put it to his mouth. Rich, Rich and Henry were on one side with a lighter and Tobo were on the other side with a lighter, even though they both didn't smoke. So mm -hmm. they will be rushing to light his cigar. That's how powerful that dude was. The president did not even have to light his own cigar. His vice president or his speaker of the house uh, 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 lit his cigarette for him. That's how powerful that dude was. Tobo was a was a silent vice president for 19 years. So, that so was, that also before before Todman, administrations before Todman, do you care to talk about how it was in terms of security and the rule of law in Liberia? Oh, but because Liberia was basically. Um, oh. a rural, a rural uh, a society mm -hmm. up until Tobert. Okay, it was, it was, it was Barclay. It was Barclay that credited money to start putting some infrastructure on the ground. Prior mm -hmm. to Barclay, nothing existed in Liberia. Just almost like footpath, few roads. In, in and you think people were not living in fear of their life because there of was, anything there, else? No way. Nobody locked their houses. They they, were, they, they, they come to the rule of law, the, the, the justice system. How it was. Was say okay oh, were people getting justice was basically for the elite the mm -hmm. justice system protected elite against the rest of the country but get, i want to say something now so okay, does that I suggest was, that it was bad then it was it, well it wasn't bad but what we're saying was that it was very partial it was very it's not bad when you said i mean it was for the elite against the, uh, the, the little men there were there were there were minimum there were minimum contacts between the two if you okay. put it that way all right, every time you. there was a contact and the law mm -hmm. had to come into play, mm -hmm. the law 90% of the time will favor the, the American Liberian over that of the indigenous. That's just the truth. Mr. Gilman, there you have it. You're just listening to your fellow debater, Mr. Tule. Uh, let's talk about the justice, not the justice system, but security and the rule of law. Uh huh. After 1980 compared to before 1980. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this is why uh, I'm saying my brother have agreed with me. Uh, and I keep telling him that the history of Liberia did not start in 1971 when Tolwa came to power. We talk about health care. Uh, people talk about why health care, health care then. And we talk about health care. And recently, uh, you saw uh, 1971, the president of the Republic of Liberia went to, to London to, to do a prostate checkup and he died there. So we know this is not, now we talk about the rule of law. My brother is talking about the the crime rate in Monrovia now. He, he I mean, he contradicts himself. First, he said the city was built for 250,000, 300,000 folks. It now has 1.5 million. So obviously the statistics is very clear. When you double and triple and quadruple a thousand times, the crime rate is going to go up. Where you have a density of people from different shared values or people from different value systems. These things happen and crime is always done. It's, an, it's, an, it, 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 it's, it's a career of opportunity. The opportunity exists for crime to be committed. It will be committed. Mr. Mr. Tula talks about uh, 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 auditors. He talked about four auditors. But when you, when you go before nine, five, five, five. okay, even five, when you go before 1980, we had the disappearances of people oh. everywhere. We have police officers. I think you heard the, 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 the famous thing about Tommy Bonar every morning beating his drivers, those who didn't, who didn't come to work on time, beating those drivers. People who and, and, and I remember the case of a Nigerian professor. What was the name? Was it Obi? Justin something Obi. like that? Yeah, Justin mm -hmm. Obi. Mm -hmm. Justin Obi. And, and, and uh, we are talking about one case here, Justin mm -hmm. Obi, uh, not only did he kill somebody, but he killed a member of the elite. 
Okay, this is a foreign guy who came in, and uh, some say it was over a girl, and and this that, and the bishop of the the, the Episcopal Church, and he killed. He had to do something. That was not the enforcement of law. When we talk about law, when we talk about yeah, how, how will you call that? Huh? How will you call that? You that call is selective that? justice. Oh. Selective oh. justice. So the, rule cares, of, rule, rule, the rule of law would be if a gay man can take a harmer to court and, and he wins. That's the rule of law. 1961, my father told me, send, uh, uh, Superintendent Dunn, he said the bastard devil did something or dancing for his house and they beat the bastard devil and undressed the bastard devil. What came out of that? Nothing, because he was a Dunn. You so the, 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 the ordinary, the, the ordinary librarian get justice at the time. You know, people who were in the villages. You know, uh, how was justice system like? Could they even get redressed in the court system at the time? Mister Gimme, I'm asking you. Oh well, I tell you because that question should go to my brother here because you and I know there were no justice system for the poor. Uh, we had. Uh, a, a, count, uh, a district commissioner and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and his, his son and I became friends later on, Jesse Gu, and a Latvia Gu father and all of that. And these people, they, they, they were so cruel to the folks when it came to the hot taxes that they would come to our town. When we talk about hot, not house, just a hot. That, that was pre Tobot. Oh, uh, you see? But the debate is not only about yeah, Tobot. We don't want to limit this to Tobot. Mm -hmm. I want to put it in context. No, mm -hmm. no, we can't. We're talking about pre-1980 and, and post-1980. Oh, now we okay. are talking about, when we talk about the hot tax, then we talk about the head tax, which is they count the head in the town and say every head in the town has to pay. Even though we didn't have representation, we did not have the benefit of the government, but yet and still we pay taxes for 200 years. And yet and still you talk about the rule of law. That is not a rule of law. Mr. Gaiman, do you know who proposed the, 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 the hot tax? Do you Listen. know who was the originator of the hot tax? Who was? Edmund, Edmund Wilman Blyding, the great venerated Edmund Wilman Blyding. And when was Wilman Blyding in 1980 and above? One at a time. Tule, go ahead and make your point. Mr. Gaiman, Mr. Gaiman, the truth is this. Eh? We agree on our thought, man. It, the, the, it, but the truth about it, the hot tax predates Stutman. It comes under it comes under uh, 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 Barclay, and it comes from the establishment of the Liberal Frontier Force. And the proponent, the architect of that entire thing, was blighting the person who everybody say, "Oh, he was he was he was a uh, pan Africanist and everything." Lies. He really wanted he wanted Liberia to become a British protectorate. He fought the first officer. The first officer of the Liberian Frontier Force was a British captain. And guess what? Crew coast from Harper all the way down to Grand Bassa County. They erected British flag on occasion to spite the government. All right. Okay? To spite the government. So when we come down, when we come down to... Down. Because I always like to... I always like to... Yeah, wait, wait uh, Jerome. I always like... I mean, Anthony. I always like to cut off... I always like to, to focus on Toba because when it comes to real national development with plans for the future the building and, and, and Tula is your right to do so but then you're not doing justice to oh, the no, because you're back. doing pre and, and post 1980. yeah but i went back i also told you where this thing came from the hot okay. time the hot time was abolished by Tobot. it's the All reality right. thank you thank you again folks you are watching focus on liberia i'm answering C. moderating in this debate between Mr. Jerome Gedman and Mr. George Cannon Tule. And the debate question uh, is Liberia before 1980, that is the first republic, and Liberia after 1980, the second republic. Which one is better? And we have been looking at the economy, we look at agriculture, we look at service delivery, we look at healthcare, we look at education, and now we just end up with security and the rule of law. Gentlemen, let me progress here. Let's talk about multi party democracy satya will say multi-partyism that big word satya let to use we will also talk about foreign relations and diplomacy and gentlemen because of time i want us to tie these two you know together multi-party multi-party democracy civil liberty freedom of speech and 
uh, foreign relations and diplomacy. We will do just that. But before we do that, let's take this another short break so that you guys can take a little water break. I see uh, Tule needs some water to drink. He's sweating. <laughs> Give me also needs some water to drink. No, He's sweating. I, so I, let's I take that really break and we'll be right by, folks. That's right. All right, folks, we are back with you here in this debate. Uh, I'm enjoying the debate so far. Gentlemen, let's continue here on our debate. Let's talk about multi party democracy, civil liberty, and freedom or free speech. Let me pull it that way. Mr. Gibbon, uh, when multi partyism was taking shape in Liberia, this is when your political eyes open. Uh, so I'll give you the opportunity to start on this one. Before 1980. Talk to me about multi party democracy. Was there anything like that in the first place? Let's talk about civil liberty. Let's talk about free speech. You go first. Uh, this one, I think uh, my brother will put his hand up and totally surrender because there is no competition here, there is no argument. There are one thing my professor Michael Dukakis told me he said, You cannot argue facts. You can only argue opinion, but you cannot argue facts. So, Mr. Tule, this is not an opinion. This is a fact. And you cannot argue that. You might well just surrender. So let's look at multi-party democracy in 1980, or prior to 1980. There were no, there, were, there was a true we party for what, 150 years. There were no other parties involved that we can call a real political party. Everything else was a charade. It was so we probably were in power for 110 years. Whatever it is, pre-1980, there were no such thing as freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of everything. Now we know what happened when Baka Mafia came on the scene in 1980 came on. We have multi-party system where we have true democracy. And then when President Wea came in, he signed the Kamara Act, as you can see, that we have all law. Or the, the 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 grotesque law against against they call it is that libel they call it where the, the journalists can be sued and and right this year we're giving 350 years in prison and all that foolishness so now we are looking at the law the freedom of speech freedom of movement freedom of the press now everybody in liberia now is a journalist you can curse the president you can write whatever you want to write so we are saying here this one it is no argument because you can't argue facts the law is here the law that was named after our brother abdu kamara it is the law that repealed everything that had to do from 1847 to 19 uh to 2000 2019 where you could not speak you could not write you could not express your opinion without the consent of the government without the threat of death without the threat of bodily harm that and, and mr. Mr. mr gibbon i don't mean to interrupt you i just realized that we have eight minutes left to the next show so uh this segment here would be like your concluding statement i, I have to do this because of time so right. you can also touch on foreign relations and diplomacy and then we'll have to come in okay well uh thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to 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 do this and we ran out of time but mm -hmm. i'm going to conclude here by saying we want to thank those who uh, are attentive to this particular subject. Maybe at some point we will return to this where we can be interactive, where folks can call in and say mm -hmm. they're coming to be read. But it, it is so juicy that we ran out of time. Mm -hmm. And we want to be thankful to our parent company for affording you the opportunity to come and, and, and moderate this, and we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But in closing, we want to let you know that the new Liberia, the new republic, is way, way better than what we did previously. I can sit here and talk to my brother across the world. That's improvement. Oh, I that's can that's that's that. 
Go ahead, Sorry, Mr. So, Gidman. Don't, don't mind ahead, too much time. We're out of time already. So we, we, these are things that we are talking about. We talk about freedom of speech. We talk about our, our democracy. We're talking about where our, our, our sitting president, Ellie Johnson, Sally, relinquished power democratically to another president. It has never happened in about almost 100 years. These are things that we have to talk about. And, and, and I should have prayed to the Almighty God that we continue to do this. We went from one high school ambassador to now 10. We went from two universities to 38. These are major improvements. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tule. Next arguing with you, but like I said, Marco Dukaka said, you cannot argue with fact. You can argue with opinion. These are not my opinion. These are fact. Thank you very much and see you next Sunday. Thank you so very much, Mr. Gidman. Uh, Mr. Tule, again, because of time, you can give your closing on Monte Party Democracy, Civil Liberty, Free Speech, Foreign Relation, and Democracy, and we appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, the reality is that when Tobert, when, uh, before Tobert, mm -hmm. you had nothing like Monte Party, nothing in Liberia. Mm -hmm. uh, Tobert came and opened the way for the registration of PAL, the uh, Progressive Alliance of Liberia. Mm -hmm. And we know that there were kickbacks from him and then there were there were uh, resistance from the PAL people. They wanted power. Mm -hmm. We saw what power can do in, in the hands of the unprepared. The typical example, George Weir. Today, he's president of the Republic of Liberia. That's why I said to you, Anthony, that um, I'm not really concerned about, about multi-party democracy because they are con within our context, because I look at Rwanda, everybody accused, I also accuse uh, Kagame of being a dictator, but look at what he has done for his people. He has uplifted their standards of living and improved their general material well-being. In Liberia, we say we want multi-party democracy. We want an exchange of ideas. The, the cross-fertilization of, of concepts and perspectives is good. By the end of the day, to what end, somebody will ask. And we have seen in Liberia that uh, we have not moved our developmental needle Okay, the re my reason for making this debate, for making, for standing and choosing this position in this debate is to show that we have not advanced our nation in the last 40 years. And, and any Liberian who listens to this is supposed to be, is supposed to cause, give a pause for concern that we have not moved as a nation. We have not moved. Forget about the plurality of universities. We don't even have an agriculture policy. We don't have an educational policy. What are our educational outcomes? What do we wish to really achieve in terms of education? So all these things are lacking and wanting because we have not determined what we want to accomplish as a people, what we want to see for our future generations. And foreign and relations democracy. and democracy. Okay, so when it comes to democracy, we, like I said, foreign relations, Tobo was a steward. And, and diplomacy, I meant to say, to Lesara. Okay, yeah, yeah. In, mm -hmm. in diplomacy, Tobo, 1979 to 1980, when he was killed, he was still the chairman of the, uh, the OAU. We saw that he hosted the OAU conference in Liberia, not in Addis Ababa. He hosted it in Liberia. So we saw the building of the, 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 the Hotel Africa, Duco Hotel Palace, and, and the, the development that he did in Liberia. We saw everything in diplomacy. He helped the establishment of, of, of the, uh, the, 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 the independence of Zimbabwe from Rhodesia to Zimbabwe. And, and he became a voice in the non-alliant movement. He questioned the, 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 the treatment of Palestinians by Israelis. And we all, and I believe that that was the reason for his death. So when it comes to the voice, Tobo wasn't just a president waiting for his, his secretary of state or his uh, sec minister of state presidential affairs, his final minister to come and tell him what they wanted him to do. This man knew what to do. He was highly educated, the head of the Baptist uh, 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 conference, head of the Baptist con uh, convention, the Baptist War Alliance, head, head locally and internationally. So this man had grabs of things well respected. We've lost that level of respectability. The 13 men we put on the pole, the only people that were, that, were, that, could, that, could, that, that, that we say there were men in those government that could, that could stand in, on par with those 13 men. But since then, we've all we have done, we we placed charlatans and criminals into positions of power and respectability. People who, who are not honorable, we call them honorable. And, and Liberia has not moved in any way. Like you always say, the material well-being of the Liberian people have been negligible since 1980. And, and it's something that needs to change. Thank you. 
Thank you so very much, Mr. George Kanantule is the co-host of our program on point. He's always here with Mr. Jerome Goodman. Uh, they agree on very little and disagree on more. Gentlemen, focus on Liberia. Can't thank you enough for giving Liberians this excellent debate performance. We appreciate that. On top of the hour, which is coming up in one minute, we have this show. The vast script, we have heard about it. The vast script, the vast script. We have a researcher by the name Charles Riley who researched this thing and even author a paper on it called Distribution of the Complexity in the Vast Script. This will blow your mind about what was developed many, many years ago that we heard about but don't know much about. It's coming on right now on Focus on Liberia and you do not want to make say i think mr gilman i see him grabbing his popcorn so yeah. that he can learn about it so folks this is how we'll come to the end of this broadcast sorry we didn't read your comment need not take phone call because of time the songs that says we are all liberians is taking us home until we catch you on top of the hour for the show that is coming on right now we say to you we are all liberians and bye-bye we all liberians <laughs>